Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode with your Firefly Realtor, your DFW resource. My name's Sal. I'm here to bring you today Dallas market update for August of 2022. All the numbers that were happening for August because I can't give you September yet. It's not the end of September. So I'm here today to bring you guys these numbers. I'm really excited because number one, I'm using my brand new camera. I hope this looks great. And uh, I just wanted to bring you guys a little bit more quality. And the other part is what's going on in the market. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys are hearing that, oh, the market's tanking, oh, it's doing bad, it's doing this. You know, it's doing bad for some people and it's doing great for others. So don't know what to tell you, you know, go out there, get a financial advisor, see what's good for you, if you should buy a house or you shouldn't. Don't just listen to anybody just on YouTube. Go out there, make sense of what is in your portfolio and if it makes sense for you guys, you know, buy a house. If you don't, you know, a lot of people say buying a house is a hedge against inflation because no matter what, if you, if you get a fixed rate on, on a house, it will always stay that certain percentage. So if all of a sudden interest rates go way up, you know, it, it will, it, nothing is gonna happen to your uh, interest rate on your house. So, well, that's if you get a fixed interest rate. If you get a variable interest rate, it's a little different. But we're not gonna go there, that's not this talk. This talk is about giving you the Dallas market update. So let's get into it. All right guys, so it goes without saying, we have to talk about September 6th. September 6th finally broke a record. There was like nine days straight down on the S&P 500. Things were going a little sideways from about, I think it was September 6th to like September 13th. Things started going pretty good for the market. Then the 13th, the CPI came out, the Consumer Price Index. Um, and it wasn't great news as everyone expected. Uh, the Dow went down like a thousand points. Uh, the S&P 500 went down like four to five percent. And a lot of people were expecting this. And even Lawrence Yoon, the National Association of Realtors, which is our governing body uh, for realtors in, in the nation, he's a chief economist for NAR. He came out and does like a little recap of what's going on. And he came out and said, hey, you know, the, the Fed is going to have to do something about this. So I know if he says something kind of uh, I won't say it was negative, but it was definitely like hey, we should they should probably do something. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> they went ahead and did something a couple days ago, and uh, you know what? Everyone expected it, and it caused bonds to be just a little crazy and, and react to the market. Now, if you guys don't know anything, why I talk so much about bonds is because mortgage-backed securities, mortgages are traded in the bond market in the ten-year Treasury. So, like when the Fed fund rate comes out, guys. I preach this every time on my video because I want you guys to be educated. If you guys, this is the first time you know, like seeing me, I hope you guys get educated on this. When the Fed comes out and they change the Fed fund rate, that does not mean they're changing the mortgage rate. Yeah, they do coincide in some way, but they're, they're not directly correlated. So when they come out and do the Fed fund rate, that's more for variable rates. Sorry, I'm trying to get better at talking. Variable rates, they're like something like credit cards and, and uh, arms, like adjustable rate mortgages, things like that. The longer rate mortgages are usually traded in the 10-year treasury bond, which if the Fed would have to come out and like change like the prime rate, and then that would be a little, that would affect them more directly. So uh, I'm not here to teach you guys about bonds. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to it because I like to see the bonds. Now, if you guys go, you guys want to be a little nerd, nerdy, um, here's a little quick tip for you guys. Uh, there's a lot of different platforms out there for trading. Go to the 10-year treasury bond and you can see what's going on with there and kind of keep up with interest rates a lot faster than the news does. So a little quick tip for you guys. Um, all right, guys, so let's get into it. DFW, DFW is really, um, it's a, 8 million people here, okay? I moved here three years ago from Austin and it's been a great decision for Mackenzie and I. Um, we love it here, we live in West Dallas. It's beautiful, it's up and coming. We live like five minutes from downtown. We're very fortunate to be where we're at. But that said, for some people, um, it's a little bit scary moving in from a different state, different city, uh, coming into Dallas because it's such a huge metroplex. It is the fourth largest metroplex in the United States, it's behind uh, in New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, then it's us. Actually, we're rivaling, oof, man, my English is bad. Rivaling, rival, I'm gonna just move on to a different word. Uh, Houston, Houston's right behind us. So Houston is uh, about four hours away from San, uh, from Dallas. San Antonio is about four hours away, and Austin's about like three hours away. So uh, it's a great place to be in. You can reach from Dallas. If you took a plane from DFW Airport, you can reach 98% of the United States within four hours. That's pretty nuts. So you have DFW, just a little notes, you have DFW Airport that American Airlines is hubbed out of, and then you have Love Airport in Dallas that is um, hubs Southwest Airlines. 
So there's and there's so many different nonstop flights from here to different domestic flights and international flights. That's just a tidbit of information for you guys. If you guys want more about what's going on in a specific area, like let's say Irving or, or you know Frisco, Plano, Fort Worth, Denton, uh, South Lake, Colorado, any one of these like specific areas, let me know. I'm pretty much I know what's probably going on in uh, for the housing market. Or if not, I can find out for you. So anyway, so let's get to it. I want to get you these numbers. These numbers are going to be really uh, kind of broad numbers, but uh, very specific to the actual area of where um, I'll be talking about. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, this snapshot right here is just the perfect snapshot that I want to show you for price decreases in my MLS. So basically, it's Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, a lot of, I think it's 13, 14 counties here. So uh, as you can see right now, let's see, 4,200 price decreases. New listings coming on the market are 3,000. So you can only imagine that these price decreases are going to be competing against these new listings coming up right now uh, and coming soon, 380. So that only goes to show 166 expired, um, 2,600 closed. There's, there's a lot going on right now in the market, especially with price decreases. Now, price decreases doesn't mean that these houses are going down in value. It's just market value. Remember, appraisal value is what the house is worth. The market value is what the market is willing to pay for the house. A little different, but you got to take both into consideration. Okay. All right, guys. So for August 2022, let's look at North Texas numbers. I know it says Texas here, but it's, it means North Texas. So let's take a look into it. Months of inventory is 2.6. This is months of inventory, those two bottom boxes and days on the market right there, 69. Those two numbers drive what exactly the market is going to pay for that house. So if I'm a realtor and I'm coming in and I'm helping you buy, I'm going to go ahead and ask that other agent that's listing the property. Hey, how long has it been on the market? I mean, I sh I'm going to know because there's numbers that I see, but hey, how long has it been on the market? You know, what's going on? He's going to be like, oh, this long. I'm like, oh, well, why has it been this long? You know, well, maybe it's overpriced. And the other thing that I'm gonna see is a months of inventory. So that's the supply that is in the market that my clients can go see because that's that may not be the only house. Now, if they wanna entice me to buy that house, I'll probably lower the price. Does that make sense? So it's because I, those two are so important that your realtor, whoever you guys use, should know those numbers pretty like close, like within a couple days off because that's what drives the price of these houses that are getting in the market. Also, so this actually comes in Spanish as well. So if you guys speak Spanish, si hablan español, por favor, yo te puedo ayudar. No puedo hablar muy bien, pero I'll try my best. Okay. <laughs> so a little Spanish for you guys. I promise I can speak Spanish. I get really, really nervous. I'm not the best Spanish speaker. I promise I'm not an interpreter, but I can definitely get my point across. All right. So. Next up, Dallas County. So Dallas County months worth of inventory is 1.7 down 12% in sales. Total days on the market average is 52 right now. Days on the market is 23. Days to close is 29. Usually right now that days to close number is pretty, well, that's a pretty good number. And uh, active listings is up 7.5%. Okay guys, Tarrant County. Tarrant County involves city like cities like Fort Worth, North Richland Hills, Haltom City, Saginaw, though you, if you just look up on Google Maps, it's a it's a good little region of of DFW. It's all the uh, west side. So active listings forty eight point two percent, close sales down fourteen percent. Months worth of inventory is one point nine. Let me kind of explain real quick. Uh, I didn't explain what month worth of inventory is. It's just the supply. So basically, if nothing else came on the market, zero it would take 1.9 months to get rid of everything on the market. So you can you can only see like the more that number goes up, the more supply there is into the market, okay? All right guys, Denton County, which involves city like Denton. <laughs> okay, so closed sales down 6.2%. Months worth of inventory is 2.3 with a days on market 61. 2.3, um, it's getting up there, I mean, if you guys have been uh, seeing my market updates or anything, you were seeing these counties have less than a month's worth of inventory, which was nuts. So that's when we were all talking about like, man, that house didn't even have, it had the sign in the yard for like 
30 minutes and then somebody already bought it. And that's when we were seeing people like just take offers within like a couple hours. Now, it's definitely not like that. It's not the market that we're in. It doesn't mean we're in a recession. It just means that we're just not in that market. We're in a different market. Active listings up 79.9%. I'm not gonna lie, I totally forgot about that number. That's a lot, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, let's go to Parker County. I wanted to involve Parker County. I don't think I involved it last uh, Dallas market update, but I did have, it was uh, up 70.7%. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna lie, I also didn't see that number. I actually didn't actually look at this one until right now. This is kind of crazy. Months worth of inventory is 3.3. I haven't seen it th uh, above three in before pandemic levels. That's nuts. So if anything over six to nine usually is like a buyer's market, anything over nine is, um, or I'm sorry, neutral market, everything over nine is a buyer's market. That six to nine is like a, like a mid-level for both sellers and buyers. So right now 3.3 .3 and it was just at one. It tells you something, right? Okay guys, last but not least, Collin County. Collin County involves cities like Frisco, Allen, McKinney, uh, Prosper, all the, areas that are like the north burbs of Dallas. So as you can see here, 20.1% is a median price and active listings 77.3%, geez. Months worth of inventory is 2.3. And I remember this specifically when I first started doing these videos, holy crap, it was 0 0.7 uh, months worth of inventory when I first started doing these. Now it's at 2.3. I'm currently working on uh, with a client to buy a house in Frisco and the client and it's hard to argue with him because with him saying I think this price can go lower I think this price is a little overpriced because the days on the market and the month's worth of inventory is is exactly what I told him and he's like Sal but like month's worth of inventory is higher now and the days on the market like I think this guy can go lower I'm like man I, I think you're right I can't argue with you and I'm not afraid that this guy's gonna sell his house. So let's see what he can do on price. Let's, let's take a little bit of a lower, let's throw a little bit of uh, an offer that's a little lower than listing price. So yeah, guys, um, so this is just the Dallas market update. This is just some numbers I wanted uh, to give to you guys. So if you guys are moving here to Dallas, use me as your resource. I'd be happy to show you like a virtual tour, whatever you guys need here in DFW, I'd be happy to do it for you. Watch out for my videos. I'm going to be coming out with some different things. I'm going to be coming out with a uh, why I moved to Dallas, you know, or moving to Dallas video. I'm going to be doing some walking tours of Dallas, little just little different things that I want to be able to provide value for you guys. So if you guys like what you see, like, subscribe. I don't know what all these YouTubers say. This is just an informative video I like to make. So that's pretty much it. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you later. Peace.